Space is huge, often seemingly endless, it is larger than you can even begin to imagine. You've heard this a thousand times, and it's no news that our little planet in the vastness of the universe makes a grain of sand on the beach seem massive in comparison. We've all heard that space is bigger than we can imagine, filled with more galaxies than you can count, each filled with countless solar systems, stars and planets. But let me tell you about the true pieces of wonder in our universe. Let me tell you about the titans of our universe. To start things off, black holes are not actually holes, even though the way they act often make it seem like they could be. A black hole is a point in space consisting of an immense amount of matter condensed into an infinitely small volume. This is known as a singularity. This might sound a bit weird, but imagine that the mass of countless stars, planets, moons and clouds of dust in space came together into a giant clump. Eventually, the power of gravity became too great, and the actual space between the atoms of the matter itself collapses under the pressure. Because the forces keeping the atoms apart has now collapsed, everything is pushed together into one infinitely small point, or ring without any volume, the singularity itself. We now have this infinitely tiny thing with an immense amount of matter, because it has so much matter but no volume, its gravitational force gives it some interesting properties. As you probably know, gravity gets stronger the closer you get. This is why our planet isn't pulled towards all the other more massive stars in our universe as much as it is towards our own smaller sun being so much closer, allowing us to stay in orbit around it. Being infinitely small, condensed into a single point of no volume and having such incredible mass, create something called an event horizon. This isn't an actual physical thing like the center itself, it can be imagined as a border or a limit. Anything or anyone that passes through this border is now so close to the mass and so deep into its gravitational pull that it is completely impossible for it to end up anywhere but in the center itself, becoming devoid of its own volume and part of the mass of the singularity itself. Anything that gets too close simply falls or technically is pulled in by the force of gravity, hence the name of a black hole. A black hole is a lot more than just the so-called hole itself, that being the event horizon and the singularity. Similar to the event horizon in the way that it isn't a physical thing but more like a limit or border, Black holes also allow for something called a photonsphere, and in the case of rotating black holes, an ergosphere as well. Starting off with the photonsphere, picture it like the satellites of black holes, though very temporary and fleeting. A photonsphere is a collection of photons, basically different kinds of light, that have fallen into orbit around the black hole just perfectly where the balance of gravity is powerful enough to prevent it from escaping its grasp but not quite enough to pull it in past the event horizon. Thus, it keeps spinning around the black hole until something changes, allowing it to escape the orbit. Either something travels very close to the black hole and blocks the path of the photon, or the mass of the black hole either shrinks or increases, changing the gravitational pull and allowing for the photons to escape their perfect orbit. But wait! If nothing can escape a black hole, then how can its mass not only increase, but also shrink? We will get to that in a minute. First though, the previously mentioned ergosphere is something entirely specific to rotating black holes. Once again, it's not a physical thing, and in this case not quite a border either, even though it sort of has one. But before you can begin to understand how the properties of an ergosphere works, you need to know a few things about rotating black holes. Because a black hole has such a gravitational pull near its event horizon, space and time itself around the black hole can get distorted. One example of an interesting result of this massive pull is something called spaghettification. That is a real word by the way. Because the effect of gravity on an object gets so much stronger the closer it gets, 
the object itself gets torn apart. You can imagine a person falling towards a black hole feet first. The power of gravity will be so much stronger on the person's feet and legs in comparison to the head and torso that the lower part gets dragged out or spaghettified in comparison to the upper part. Now back to the rotating black holes. As you know, immense gravity does some funky things to objects in its space. But when the mass generating this immense gravitational pull has a significant spin, things get weirder. When a black hole spins at a very high speed, the singularity actually transforms into a ring rather than a single point, it kind of gets dragged out in a circle you can imagine. But more interesting yet, the rotation of the black hole creates what can be imagined as a swirling effect twisting space and time itself around the black hole. This twisting effect just outside the event horizon kind of is the ergosphere, like a ball squeezed between two flat surfaces. It is defined as the area around the black hole in which the rotational pull generated by the spin of the black hole is so great that nothing can stand still within it. In order for something to stand still within this area, outside the event horizon, it would need to be traveling against the direction of the rotation faster than the speed of light. As you get further out towards the edge of the ergosphere, the speed required to stand completely still decreases, until at the very edge of the ergosphere when the speed required to stand still has decreased to that of the speed of light. You are now standing on the very edge of the black hole's ergosphere. The ergosphere itself also has an interesting shape, or rather an interesting development of its shapes. You can imagine it as if the black hole was inside a giant ball, slightly bigger than enough to surround the event horizon. This ball was then squeezed together until the top and bottom touched the poles of the event horizon. This is what the ergosphere looks like when the black hole has a slightly lower rotational speed, like a squeezed ball flattened at the poles to just touch the event horizon and pushed outwards at the equator. But as the rotational speed increases, this oblated spheroid or squeezed ball actually swells up. However, whilst it increases in size, its edge never ceases to touch both poles, giving it a kinda strange pumpkin-like shape. Because things can travel in and out of the ergosphere even though they cannot stand still within it, it is actually possible to both take from and give to the rotational energy of a black hole by traveling through the ergosphere against or via the direction of the rotation. Technically, nothing can move into a black hole and then move back out. But this doesn't mean that the black hole cannot lose mass. Through something called Hawking radiation or black hole evaporation, it is possible for a black hole to lose mass. This process works through quantum mechanics and vacuum fluctuations, into which we won't delve too deep in this video. More simply put, empty space is not really empty. This is all going to sound a bit weird if you have never heard anything like it before, but the sheer vacuum of space is constantly fluctuating and moving in a way. This allows for pairs of a particle and an antiparticle to be created from nothing. Because these are each other's exact opposite, the same amount of mass and energy that has now been created in the universe by the particle has also been removed by the antiparticle. It's like adding two equal numbers together, only one of them being negative. The end result is zero, nothing, and nothing has been added or taken away from the universe, even though something has technically been created. It's kind of a strange concept, and in case you want to delve deeper into the topic yourself, I'm going to leave you a few links in the description. When these pairs are created close enough to the event horizon, it is theoretically possible for one to be created outside and to stay outside, whilst the other one has been created inside and inevitably becomes one with the black hole. Now imagine that the inner one was negative and the outside one positive. Once the negative one reaches the center of the black hole and becomes part of the singularity, the black hole's total mass will have decreased by the same amount that was added to the outside world. 
To any outside observer, it would appear as if the black hole has lost a piece of its mass, or a piece of its mass has escaped. And even though this is technically not the case, for all intents and purposes, it is. When it comes to black holes, there is very little that we can know with absolute certainty. Everything from what actually happens inside a black hole to how they could ever be created and if they even exist at all, is still being debated from time to time as new ideas and pieces of evidence come forward. I'm not going to discuss black holes in this way for this video, but if you do want to dwell deeper into the topic yourself, here are a few things you might want to look into. Gravitational waves detected by LIGO, a mathematical proof discovered in 2014 arguing against the possibility of black holes being created from stars, gravitational lenses, and Hawking radiation. There's a lot more out there when it comes to black holes, but for this video, that is all. I hope you enjoyed it, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comment section below, or with just a like or a dislike for either end of the spectrum. And I'll see you in the next one.